Hi, my name is Mike. Thanks for joining me today on my channel, Technically Church, where I share over 20 years of experience in audio, video, lighting, and multimedia. You can always find out more on my website at technicallychurch.com. Let's jump in. In this video, I'm going to talk about the processing chain on the Behringer wing, uh, how that relates to uh, the band's ears. So either in a wireless uh, in-ear setup or in a Behringer P16 personal monitor, um, what you want to do with the processing in sending that back to their ears. Let's dive in. All right, so on the Behringer wing, uh, it's pretty powerful. Obviously, you can do quite a bit of things. Um, so let's go to a vocal channel here. I've got a, um, a gate, right? So you can have a gate, uh, you can have an effects processor, then you've got your EQ, then I've got a compressor, you can have another insert there. Um, so you can do quite a few things. And, and in these effects uh, channels here, you know, you can do all sorts of effects, you can do um, auto-tune, you can even send that effects out to an external uh, wave server, for instance, do some processing and send it back. So you've got quite a bit of things that you may or may not be doing to that vocal uh, in front of house. Now, it's really important to understand what may be going back to that vocalist uh, as far as their in-ears are concerned. So, for instance, I may need a really heavy compressor uh, on a vocalist for it to sound correct at front of house, you know, in, in the mix for some reason. But maybe the vocalists themselves don't want to hear that in their ears. Uh, same with the gate, or uh, maybe I'm using auto-tune, and maybe it sounds great in front of house, but it's messing them up in their ears and they don't want to hear it. So, uh, there's a couple different things you can do here. Uh, there's a little red dot right there, and if you hit this setting uh, wrench at the bottom, you get this tap point. So it shows the red dot currently is after the compressor. All right, so that tap point is where it's being sent to your vocalist in-ears. So currently, everything above the tap point is being sent to their ears. So I don't have a gate on, I don't have the effects uh, channel there on, I do have an EQ, and then I have a compressor. So that EQ and that compressor are being sent back to their ears. Now that may be the way you want it, that may not be. So you can take that tap point and you can just drag it. So let's say, you know, they're complaining they don't want that compressor. So you just add, drag that tap point right above the compressor and then you press the settings wheel to lock it in. So now that compress compression is happening after it's being sent to their ears and they're not hearing it. So you can drag that around. One other cool thing you can do here is you can actually drag around how it's processed. So for instance, um, maybe they want the compressor, but they don't want the EQ. Well, in this case, my compressor is below the EQ. So for, in order to send them the compressor, I have to send them the EQ as well. You can actually drag this around. So I can grab this box here, drag the compressor above the EQ. Now I can drag, drag that tech, tap point uh, above the EQ. So now the compressor is being sent, then the tap point, and then the EQ. So they're now not getting that EQ in their ears. Now, you might want to think this through because the order of processing does affect the sound. So sometimes you want to do an EQ first and then compress what you've done to the EQ. Sometimes you want to compress that channel first and then do the EQ. So it does matter and it can change your vocal tone. So that's something to keep in mind. Thanks for joining me today. Again, my name is Mike. You can always find out more on my website, technicallychurch.com or on my YouTube channel, Technically Church. Look forward to seeing you soon.